That's why he says that right there in the verse. He says, listen, he says, but I would that all men were even as myself, but every man had his proper gift of God. Everybody ain't got this gift. One after this manner and another after that. Then drop down to verse number nine. He says, all right, so you ain't got the gift. This is where you probably at. But if they cannot contain, let them what? Marry, for it is better to do what? Look up here. Let's talk about this burn issue. Can we talk about it? Paul says, all right, he didn't say it was wrong to have passions, to desire to be, uh, you know, with the opposite sex. That's a natural, that's a natural response. But if you cannot contain them, I wish I had somebody here. Ain't nothing wrong with having the fire, but the fire got to be holy. So you don't want to lose the heat. Because you might need it later on. See, a lot of folks want to come down to the altar, pastor, pray that God just takes this away from me. I don't want to have these urges. I, I, you don't want me to pray that. Because if you get married, then you're going to be coming right back to the same altar. Lord, bring them back. Lord, bring them back. What you need is for them to be contained. Ain't nothing wrong with fire as long as you keep it in the stove. But if you grab that fire and start throwing it on the couch, throwing it on the bed, throwing it places it's not supposed to be, then we got a disaster on our head. All Paul is saying, get your fire in the proper place. As long as you marry, you can be on fire as much as you want to. Just satisfy your fire with your husband or your wife. Your neighbor tell them, ain't nothing wrong with the fire now. Tell them just contain the fire. Paul said, I got mine. Paul says, I got the gift, man. Paul said, mine up under control. I got a gift. He said, but you ain't got the gift. You find yours sometime leaping out. He said, maybe you better start praying and seeking God for a husband or a wife. He's not saying go marry somebody just to have a sexual partner. Mm, mm, mm. This is going to be a good series here. Give God a praise. This is going to be good here. Come. Man is spirit, soul, and body. He's not just physical. Ain't, you don't need nobody who can just satisfy you physically. You need somebody who understands where you are spiritually. You need somebody that can handle you mentally and emotionally. You need somebody that can stimulate you, or stimulate you intellectually. Somebody that can hold a conversation. You need somebody that can get a prayer through. Can I pray to somebody? Mm, I feel like preaching this. In, 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 in both of the previous services, and even here this morning, you couldn't have a Paul church. Most folk would have left Paul church because Paul came out and said, listen, let me ask y'all something. He said, who got the gift in here? Who got the gift of celibacy? You ain't even bothered by the opposite sex. You ain't got, you, you, you know, you got this thing together. You, you okay? You, you don't need no man. You don't need no woman. You okay because you just focused on the Lord. A few folk raised their hand. We with you, Paul. We got the gift. Then he said, all right, the rest of y'all need to get married. See? Most, the rest of y'all need to be seeking God for a godly mate. Because if you're not, if you got all that passion, and if you don't have in, in the confounds of marriage, then you're going to get in trouble. And you're going to deal with this burning, and the burning is not hellfire, but what he's saying, you got this uncontrolled passions that's going on in you that need to be dealt with, but God wants them dealt with in the confounds of marriage. I love what it says in the Amplified. It says, but if they have not self-control, restraint of their passion, they should marry. But it's better to marry than to be aflame with passions and tortured continuously with ungratified desire. Talk Amplified. Well, I'm going to preach it anyhow. Now, you know the reason why y'all want to shout me down this morning? Because marriage has become a bad word in our society. In our culture today, when you say marriage, people tense, tense up. I ain't ready for commitment. Mm -mm, man. Don't start. One lady at 930, sir, when I say marriage, starts shaking her head, it almost fell off. <laughs> Can I tell you why we're so afraid of the M-word marriage? 
because how it has been depicted in this play in the media, television, society, even the church. Every time you see somebody married on television, ain't nobody happy, everybody cheating. You got some nagging wife always on the husband. You got some husband that's abusive, don't want to do anything. No, no wonder people afraid. But you got to understand that we don't go to the television to understand how the family ought to be. You don't watch Desperate Housewives to understand how family ought to be run. You go to the Word of God. And family, according to God's Word, is a good thing. It's a good thing. Now, because that's not the proper example being set by many Christians, guess what you have? Last year, listen to me, last year they had more cases of STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, among the ages of 10 to 12. Because the breakdown of the family, so nobody is being an example, teaching, showing, educating our young kids that yes, you're going to have hormones, you're going to have passions, but they are only to be, it's detrimental and dangerous for you if they're not used properly God's way in the confounds of marriage. If you go out here on your own expressing your passions, you can mess up your life. You can do some stuff that you end up paying for for the rest of your life. Not even to mention the, the diseases that are out there now. We've got to a day and time now with the breakdown of the family. You don't have role models like you used to. Role models were never supposed to be NBA players, never supposed to be football players. They were supposed to be dads and moms. And so you know what folks say today? I ain't getting married. I ain't ready for that kind of commitment. So we can just live together. Let me help you with that. There used to be a time where folk, if they were living together shacking, they didn't want nobody to know. We live in a day and time now where shackers brag. Got so deep that shackers will buy a new house and invite the pastor over to bless it. <laughs> Having a house warming, pastor, can you drop by? Sure. God bless you, Mr. and Mrs. What's y'all last name? Oh, we ain't married. Mm. Family values have crumbled, and how is God going to bless a house that's out of order? Somebody yell up here and tell me to preach anyway. And how can a person be ready to sleep with you, but not ready to marry you? It's much stuff that's out there today. When you lay down with somebody, you're putting your whole life on the line. So you say that you'll go this far with me, but you won't go all the way. And we got to get out of there. You, can, you cannot give milk away thinking that somebody can get free milk and one day going to come and marry the cow. No, if I've been getting milk all this time and then have to be committed to the cow, can I preach to somebody here? What makes you think that I'm going to commit to a cow when you've been giving me free milk? I wish I had somebody here. Can I preach you like I feel it? Say this with me. Are you marriage material? We're going to find out. We're going to find out up in here. I was out there in California one time. I tell you all the truth, my mama taught me how to cook. Collard greens, get your fat back, get your meat, you throw it in there, cut up the green, wash them, let them boil. You don't know how to do fried corn, throw my flour down in there, and all of a sudden my grease, my pepper, my salt, and make some fried corn. I know how to fry my chicken. I know how to do it, know how to wash it, cut up. One day I was trying to make, some, uh, uh, make a cake, and I had used up all the flour. So I called my mama, I said, Mama, I know you told me how to cook. Can I substitute meal in the place of the flour? She said, boy, you can't make no cake with no meal. She said, you just gonna have some old crumbled up cornbread in there. She said, get the right stuff. Hmm, I'm trying to preach to somebody here. There's some folk trying to make a marriage, but you got the wrong stuff. I'm, you cannot want a godly marriage, but you go shopping in the club and get somebody who's just a man, ain't got no godly on them, 